Hi everyone, today we'll be looking at the June 2019 mechanics paper. Question 1, we've got this expression for the velocity of a particle P. When T is 0, the position vector is minus 20, 20. And we need to find the acceleration of P when T is 4. Now we know that the acceleration is simply the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So if we differentiate the I component, we get 6. And if we differentiate the j component, well, we get the power down, so it's minus 7.5, and we deduct 1 from the power, t to the half meters per square second. Now, when t is 4, we substitute in here, we get 6 and minus 7.5 times 4 to the half, which is just 6 minus 15 meters per square second. In B, we need to find the position vector of P when T is 4, where the position vector is simply given by the integral of velocity with respect to time. So we will integrate 6Ti minus 5T to the 3 over 2 j with respect to t. This gives me 6t squared over 2i minus 5t to the 5 over 2 over 5 over 2j plus a constant which is in vector form because the whole problem is worked out in vector form. So we get that the position vector r is 3t squared i minus 2t to the 5 over 2j plus c. Well, we know that when t is 0, the particle was at minus 20, 20, so r is minus 20i plus 20j, and this means that the constant of integration is simply the minus 20i plus 20j. And therefore, we get that the position vector is given by 3t squared minus 20, that's the i component, plus 20 minus 2t to the 5 over 2, and that's the j component. Now, we need to find the position vector when t is 4. So when t is 4, I will simply be substituting into the above expression 3 times 4 squared minus 20 i plus 20 minus 2 times 4 to the 5 over 2 j. Plug everything on the calculator and it gives you 28 i minus 44 j and that's meters. In question 2, it's a particle, the acceleration is constant, 2 i minus 3 j. We've got the initial velocity, it's minus i plus 4 j. And we know that at capital T seconds, we are moving in the direction of 3i minus 4j, and we need to find the value of capital T. Now, because we are looking at the constant acceleration problem, we can use Suvat equations. We know that V is u plus a t. Now, the velocity is moving in the direction of the vector 3 minus 4, so it must be a multiple of 3 minus 4. So I'm just going to put a lambda 3 minus 4 there. The initial velocity was minus 1, 4. The acceleration was 2, negative 3. And the time is just capital T. If I equate the i component, I get that 3 lambda is minus 1 plus 2 t. And if I equate the j components, I get minus 4 lambda is 4 minus 3t. I will multiply this first equation by uh, 4, and this will give me 12 lambda is minus 4 plus 8t. And I will multiply the second equation by 3, and I get minus 12 lambda is 12 minus 9t. This means that upon addition of these two equations, I'm left with 0 is 8 minus t. So capital T is 8 
seconds. Now for part B, we know that at T is 4 seconds, P is at the point B, and we need to find the distance A, B. Now, I will start by writing out the equation I'll be using. I'm using that the position vector is the initial position plus ut plus a half a t squared. Now, the position vector at 4 seconds is going to be r b, and the initial is the position vector of a, so it's r a. u is minus 1, 4 and uh, the time t is 4 plus a half the acceleration we said is 2 negative 3 times 4 squared this means that r b minus r a is gonna be minus 4 16 plus 16 minus 24 now this is just 12 minus 8 and if we deduct the position vector of a from the position vector of b this is simply the vector a b so a b is 12 minus 8. we were asked to find the distance a b so it's just the magnitude the length of this vector and this simply calls for pythagoras theorem this will be 12 squared plus 8 squared square root and it's equal to 4 root 13 meters. In question 3, we've got two blocks of masses 2m and 3m respectively are attached to the ends of a light string. We've got A being held at rest on a fixed rough plane. Tan of alpha here is 5 over 12. So the first thing to do is draw the triangle here. It's 5 over 12. It's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, which means that sine alpha will be 5 over 13 and cos alpha will be 12 over 13. Now, we are being told that the coefficient of friction between A and the plane is 2 thirds, so mu is 2 thirds and the blocks are released from rest and A moves up the plane. The tension is capital T and we need to show that capital T is 12 mg over five. Now the first thing to do in such questions is of course to include all the uh, forces involved. So let me start with the weights. I've got three mg here. I've got the tension over here. It's the same tension this way. I've got the weight of A here. It's a 2 mg, this one. So let me just throw this here. 2 mg. And we also have a reaction. There is a reaction over here. And I also need to take into account the friction, so the reaction is here. Uh, the friction here is just nu r. So this is nu r. And we also need to do some resolving of the weight so that we always work along the plane and perpendicular to the plane. So this will be here, the vertical component. This is still alpha, so this is 2mg cos alpha, and the downward component will be 2mg sine alpha. We know that the reaction here should be equal to this force, so R is 2mg cos alpha, and we also have that uh, a is about to go up the plane, so we've got acceleration up the plane like this. And we've got acceleration downwards over here, like that. So let me put everything here because we need to have a really clear picture of what's going on. 
So this is all we have here. So we need to show that the, the tension is uh, 12 mg over 5. So I could start by considering B. Now B is going downwards, so I will be doing forces downwards, so uh, just the weight minus forces upwards equals to mass times acceleration. And then considering A, I'll be doing T minus 2 mg sine alpha minus mu R is equal to 2 ma. Now sine alpha is 5 over 13 and mu is 2 thirds and R is 2 mg cos alpha which is 12 over 13 and this equal to 2 ma. This simplifies to t minus 2 mg is equal to 2 ma. So we're looking at simultaneous equations here. I could actually multiply the first one by 2 and the second one by 3 to eliminate the a term. So this leads to 6 mg minus 2t is equal to 6 ma and 3t minus 6 mg is equal to 6 ma. I will deduct one from the other and we have 6 mg minus minus 6 mg so 12 mg minus 5t is 0 so 12 mg is 5t which leads to 12 mg over 5 being equal to t as required. Now, after B reaches the ground, A continues to move up the plane until it comes to rest before reaching P. Determine whether A will remain at rest, carefully justifying your answer. Well, if we go back here and we look at the situation, we still have this component of the weight here, the 2 mg sine alpha. The maximum frictional force is mu r, so it will all be based on that. So it will reach a maximum point here, and then it will want to slide down, so we'll have friction in the other direction. So let's start by considering 2 mg sine alpha, and then mu r, and see how these two compare. So 2 mg sine alpha, well, we know that sine alpha is 5 over 13, so this is equal to 10 mg over 13, and then we know that the maximum frictional force will be mu r, which is equal to 2 thirds times 2 mg cos alpha, which is 2 thirds times 2 mg times 12 over 13 which is equal to 16 over 13 mg. It's obviously greater than the component of the weight along the plane. So we're just gonna say that since F max is equal to mu r, which is 16 over 13 mg, and this is greater than 10 mg over 13, which is the 2 mg sine alpha, then A will remain at rest. So this simply means that the component of the weight will not be able to overcome the frictional force, so uh, the box will remain where it uh, reaches. In C, we are being asked to suggest two refinements that will make the model more realistic. So there are quite a few things we could improve on upon here. So one would be to take into account the weight of the string, because we have assumed it to be having no mass. So take into account the weight of the string. Uh, 
Another thing we could say is take into account the dimensions of the block rather than modeling it as a particle. And we could also um, take into account that the string is not inextensible, so it's extensible. And also that the pulley is not smooth. So and any two of these will be enough for you to score the two marks. Question four, we've got a ramp AB of length 8 meters and mass 20 kilograms. It's resting in equilibrium with the end A on rough horizontal ground. And uh, the, the ramp rests on a smooth, solid cylindrical drum, partly underground. This is the situation here. We know that tan theta is 7 over 24. So I will start by drawing my triangle as always. So this is theta, this is 7, this is 24. It's a 7, 24, 25 triangle, which means that sine theta is 7 over 24 and cos theta is 24, sorry, 7 over 25 and the cos theta is 24 over 25. I will also be adding all the forces before actually reading the question. I will add all the forces. So I will start with the weight. So this is going to be halfway through, it's 20G and the distance here is 4 meters, uh, which means that the distance up to C is just 1 meter. We've got a reaction at A, so there it is, reaction at A, we've got a reaction at C. And we also have frictional forces at A, so F, which is obviously mu times R A. So we are being asked to, in part A, to explain why the reaction from the drum on the ramp at point C acts in a direction perpendicular to the ramp. So all we have to say is that since the drum is smooth, Reaction is perpendicular to the ramp. We have no friction of forces. And then we need to find the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the ramp at A. Note that this is a nine mark question, so there's quite a lot involved here. I will be revisiting my diagram here. Well, we've got two forces here. One is going up, the other is going down. And this reaction at C, I will be resolving this upwards and to the left. So I will be drawing this part here. This here is theta. So this is RC cos theta. And this here is RC sine theta. So the idea is that I will be taking moments about C. I will be equating the upward forces with the downward forces and then the horizontal forces, this one with this one. This will lead to three equations. I've got three unknowns, mu, RA and RC. And hopefully I'll be able to see what's happening here. So off we go. Part B, I will start by taking moments about C. So we have five cos theta R A. So if we go back to the diagram for a moment, five cos theta is the horizontal, the perpendicular distance from C. So this here is five cos theta times R A, this is the anti-clockwise moment, sorry, the clockwise moment. And then for the anti-clockwise moments, I will be considering the weight and the friction here. So this will be equal to 
1 cos theta times 20g. That's the anti-clockwise moment due to the weight of, of the ramp plus 5 mu r a sine theta. Now we know that uh, cos theta is 24 over 25 and I'm going to be substituting here these numbers and we have that uh, sine theta is uh, 7 over 25. I could start off by cancelling out the 25s because they appear throughout and then I'll divide everything by 5. This leaves me with a 4. So all in all I'm left with 24 RA is 96 G plus 7 mu RA. So that was the equation derived from considering moments. Now if I look at the horizontal forces acting we will see that mu RA is equal to RC sine theta. Well, sine theta is 7 over 25, so mu RA is 7 over 25 RC. So 25 mu RA over 7 is equal to RC. And it's time now to look at the vertical forces. So we've got that Ra plus Rc cos theta is equal to 20g. So in the place of Rc, I'll be putting this. So we have that Ra plus 25 mu Ra over 7. Well, cos theta is going to be uh, simply we said cos theta is 24 over 25. And this is equal to 20 G. So the 25 with the 25 cancels out. I'll multiply them by seven and I get seven R A plus 24 mu R A is equal to 140. G. So this means I can solve for mu R A, 24 mu R A is equal to 140 G minus 7 R A. So mu R A is equal to 140 G minus 7 R A over 24. The reason I'm doing all of this is that I, is that I plan to substitute the mu R A we got here into this one here and find Ra. So I will put mu Ra with whatever I found just right down here. So this means that 24 Ra is equal to 96 G plus 7 times 140 G minus 7 Ra over 24. I will multiply everything by 24 to get rid of the fraction. So 576 RA is equal to 2304 G plus 980 G minus 49 RA. So this leads to 625 RA is equal to 3284 G. So RA is 3,284G over 625. We found RA. This turns out to be 59.49 dot dot dot. And I can use this to find mu. So I'm just gonna substitute the value of RA I got here. So 51.49 dot 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 times mu is equal to 140G minus seven times 51.49 dot 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 over 24. And solving leads to mu being 672 over 821. So I've got the mu, I've got the reaction at A. So let's revisit the diagram. This is where we stand. We know this. 
We can calculate this, and obviously we were asked to find the magnitude of the resultant at A, so it will be just the magnitude of the combined force, which means this squared plus this squared square root. In other words, Pythagoras here to find the magnitude of the resultant. So all I need to do is say that the force will be R A squared plus mu R A squared all square root and this gives an answer of 66.5 newtons. Remember, we're giving answers to 2 or 3SF because we've been using G to be 9.8. And then in part C, the ramp is still in equilibrium, but the ramp is not now modeled as being uniform, and the center of mass is assumed to be closer to A than to B. State how this will affect the magnitude of the normal reaction between the ramp and the drum at C. So the center of mass will be moved somewhere here. Well, if we still take moments about A, we will see that the clockwise moment here will be less because it is closer to A, which means that the moment here should be also less, which means that the reaction will be less. So let's write this down properly nicely here. So part C, if the center of mass is closer to A, the clockwise moment of the ramp about A will be less. And since it is still in equilibrium, the reaction at C will be less. In question five, we've got points A and B 50 meters apart. We've got two small balls, P and Q, projected, and P is moving on with 20 meters per second initially at 30 degrees to the horizontal, Q with U meters per second at theta to the horizontal, and at time T is 2, they collide. So we need to find the velocity of P at the instant before it collides with Q. I will start by resolving the initial velocity, so the vertical component is 20 sine 30 and the horizontal component is 20 cos 30 and then this is similarly gonna be u sine theta and the horizontal component will be u cos theta so i will be using the Suvad equation V is U plus AT and we know that the horizontal component for A, so VX, will simply be UX, which is 20 cos 30, which turns out to be 10 root 3. Remember that the vertical, the horizontal component has no acceleration, so it's just the initial component of the velocity all the way through the journey whereas for the uh, vertical component vy it's going to be the initial vertical component plus a t and acceleration is simply negative g so this is 20 sine 30 minus plus minus 9.8 times 2 and it is just minus 9.6 so we've got the vertical and the horizontal components, which means that the velocity will simply be 10 root 3 squared plus minus 9.6 squared, all square root, and this leads to 19.8 meters per second. That was part A. Part B, we need to find the size of angle theta and the value of u. So 
The way to approach this is to consider first of all the horizontal motion. So horizontally, what we have is that the sum of the displacements should be 50 because the distance that P goes to the right plus the distance that Q goes to the left should be adding up to 50. So we are moving with a constant velocity horizontally and it's going to be 20 cos 30 times the time, which is 2 seconds, plus u cos theta times 2 is equal to 50. So this is what we will have here. 20 cos 30 times 2 plus u cos theta times 2 is equal to 50. So 20 root 3 plus 2u cos theta is 50 so there's a 2 there I divide everything by 2 I get 10 root 3 plus u cos theta is 25 which leads to u cos theta is equal to 25 minus 10 root 3 now vertically they have the same vertical displacement we will be using s is ut plus a half a t squared so what we have here is that the vertical displacement of both balls is the same. So for ball P, I'll be using this component with acceleration being negative G. And for B, Q here, it's going to be U sine theta with acceleration being negative G again. So this means that 20 sine 30 times 2, the time, plus a half times minus g times 2 squared is equal to u sine theta times 2 plus a half times minus g times 2 squared. Obviously, these two terms cancel out, and I'm left with 20 is equal to 2u sine theta or simply that 10 is u sine theta. So we need to find theta and we need to find u. I will start by saying that u sine theta over u cos theta is equal to 10 over uh, 25 minus 10 root 3, which we found uh, just above here. And therefore, tan theta is 10 over 25 minus 10 root 3 which leads to theta being 52.5 and i can proceed in finding it. u well u sine theta is 10 u sine of 52.5 dot 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 i'm using full accuracy here is 10 so this turns out to give me that u is 12.6 meters per second. And then state a limitation, it's part C now, other than a resistance that could affect the accuracy of your answers. Well, someone could say that we could have used more accuracy for G. So this is limiting the accuracy of our answer because we are just using a value for g that's correct to two significant figures so using g to 2sf only is something that's limiting the accuracy of our answers another thing to mention will be ignoring the dimensions of the balls that's also affecting the accuracy of our answers